So, I went looking for a Naruto Ultimate Ninja Story Explained video, and sadly, I couldn't find anything. So, I'm here today to loosely explain the story within these games. And before we start, I just want to say Ultimate Ninja Heroes 1 and 2 will not be on this list. As for why, is because Ultimate Ninja Heroes 1 is basically just a port of Ultimate Ninja 2. And to quickly explain Naruto Ultimate Ninja Heroes 2, it follows its own story taking place somewhere in between Sasuke leaving the Leaf Village in the actual recovery arc. Orochimaru is the main antagonist in this story and he has sealed away Castle Dusk within a summoning scroll. The reasoning for it is to use the power to suck the vitality out of the Hidden Leaf Village. Princess Dusk, or Princess Kasumi, is infused with said castle, and is under Orochimaru's influence. But, by the end of the game, Naruto helps her break free from her curse, setting her soul free and her mind to rest as she can be with the ones that Orochimaru has killed, while under disguise as a ninja from the Hidden Leaf Village. Anyway, with all that out the way, let's dive right into it. Naruto Ultimate Ninja 1 This game loosely covers the events from the original manga from the introduction arc up to the invasion of Konoha arc. The game's 12 stories are meant to depict the events from different characters' perspectives, and as a result, some of them deviates from the original source material, such as Neji being declared the winner in his fight against Naruto. Each story consists of up to 6 battles divided by dialogue in a manga-style display, one of its many homages to its original source material. Not too much to say about this game. It's a great game, do not get me wrong. The story does seem rather short, but that's to be expected in the first entry in this series. Now, moving on to the next one. Naruto Ultimate Ninja 2 In this game, much like the first one, the story mode consists of two arcs. The story mode loosely covers the events up to episode 96 in the anime, as well as a filler arc made up for this game involving a special seal made by Orochimaru. The first being an added story arc that takes place between the search for Sanade and the Sasuke recovery mission. As for the second, in this arc, Orochimaru has Kabuto use a technique called the Forbidden Technique Ghetto Seal to seal away Kakashi's Sharingan. Orochimaru then starts his second invasion on Konoha and uses the summoning in Pure World Reincarnation to revive Zabuza. Haku, and even the third Hokage. It's a good twist on the story. I love that Kabuto gets more shine and is able to use the seal, which kind of makes him a little more cooler. Then, seeing Orochimaru's reanimation summoning is absolutely wild. This filler arc almost feels like it could be canon. That's honestly how good it is. Anyway, moving on to the third game. Naruto Ultimate Ninja 3 this game offers a different sort of story mode from its predecessor, Ultimate Ninja 2. It replays every major fight from the beginning of the series, from Naruto vs. Kakashi in the training, to the end of Part 1, Naruto vs. Sasuke, the final battle. Although, it skips a lot of dialogue and transition scenes. Scenes such as the tuning exam's preliminaries, and most of the cutscenes we grew accustomed to in Ultimate Ninja 2 are completely gone. This decision was made to ensure players that they can get right back into the story, but when the cutscenes are there, they're great. Story-wise, it's still good today, although the removing of the cutscenes is a bit odd if you ask me. Considering there's always a skip cutscene option you could have added. Anyways, moving on. Naruto Ultimate Ninja 4 Oh boy. Buckle up. This game's Master Mode is the story mode that takes place before the storyline of Naruto Shippuden. In this mode, players are able to experience the main Shippuden story, but before that, they must complete a original storyline called The Black Shadow. 
The storyline is fairly long, and at the end of it, they have to defeat the Black Shadow himself in order to move on to the main Shippuden story. The Shippuden plotline in this game ends halfway through the Kazekage rescue mission, approximately up to episode 15 in the Shippuden anime. Oh boy, let's actually dive into this one, shall we? During Naruto's journey with Jiraiya, somewhere after he developed the Big Ball Rasengan, Naruto proceeded with his training and was given prayer beads, which he put around his arms and legs, and is put through Jiraiya's sealing technique, four limbs waiting seal, making the beads really heavy and forcing Naruto to carry the beads until they glow red and Jiraiya takes them off effectively making Naruto exponentially more powerful. Then they make their way to Tree Felling Village, renowned for its mine caves and high quality crystals. Naruto and Jiraiya discover several villagers gathered around the cave, including the village mayor. A young woman living nearby appears before them and explains about the ceremony going on. The villagers had gathered for a ritual, that is, a human sacrifice. Jiraiya then explains it's in fact a ceremony to offer human sacrifices to the demon named Black Shadow living inside the cave. The human sacrifice for the ceremony is a little girl named Aoi. Progressing into the cave to stop a determined Aoi, Naruto gets stopped by an unknown creature claiming to be Black Shadow. The creature blocks Naruto's path with a crystal wall. Naruto tries to break it with his Rasengan, but fails. Meanwhile, the beads start to glow red, and Naruto leaves the cave to find Jiraiya to get them off. Investigating further, Jiraiya asks Naruto to find the lady they had met with earlier, before he can take off his beads. Asking around for the whereabouts of the lady, Naruto gathers vital information about the Black Shadow and the Tree of Life that once grew in front of the cave. The Tree of Life, leaves of which were said to cure even the incurable diseases, was cut down by the ancestors of the village to make transportation of crystals easier. However, they were not aware of the demon that rested within the cave, the Black Shadow. The Black Shadow could not stand the smell of the flowers that grew beside the Tree of Life, and was thus forced to live in a remote part of the cave. Meanwhile, the Tree of Life nurtured the flowers that grew beside it, but when it was cut down, all the flowers withered with it. Free of the fragrance, the Black Shadow appeared before the cave. To avoid destruction, the authorities of the village decided to provide one sacrifice to the demon annually, hence the ritual. Naruto also finds the location of the lady, and in the Forest of Delusion, he finds the woman. Jiraiya appears before both Naruto and the woman and points out that the woman was Aoi's mother, Shubaki. It is then revealed that the primary motive of Aoi to head inside the cave was to bring back the leaves of the Tree of Life, known to cure even the incurable diseases. Shubaki was indeed suffering from an incurable disease. After the talk with her, Jiraiya takes the beads off of Naruto. As Naruto heads back into the cave, Shubaki's condition worsens. Before he leaves, she gives a pendant to Naruto, asking him to deliver it to Aoi, saying that it will protect her. Naruto reaches the gates of the cave, and remembers an old friend. Reaching the seal, he breaks past the crystal wall. Naruto goes further inside the cave, and finds Aoi heading deeper into the cave. Naruto gives her the pendant, and asks why she was doing it. Aoi then starts crying and says she refuses to watch her mother die as she watched her father. Naruto, moved by her words, asks Aoi to stay there while he will deal with the Black Shadow. Naruto then leaves and enters the heart of the cave. Three figures appear and then fuse together to form the Black Shadow. 
the final battle between the two begins. But Naruto soon finds out that the Black Shadow is invulnerable. Naruto gets cornered in a moment, and the Black Shadow proceeds to deliver his final blow when Aoi enters and distracts him. Then, Black Shadow looks at the sacrifice and decides to deal with her first. Naruto somehow blocks Black Shadow's attack and saves Aoi in the nick of time. The pendant Aoi received from Naruto, indirectly from her mother, breaks and some petals fall out. Black Shadow then gets uncomfortable from the fragrance of the petals. Naruto then remembers the words from Jiraiya and the other villagers. The Black Shadow can't stand the smell of the flowers that grew beside the Tree of Life. He finds his last opportunity to defeat Black Shadow and releases his chakra. He then manages to defeat Black Shadow. Now exhausted, Naruto falls unconscious and wakes up in an unknown house, confused. He leaves the house and sees Jiraiya standing outside who tells him he had been sleeping for two weeks. Naruto, remembering about Aoi, quickly leaves the Forest of Delusion. He then sees Aoi and her mother, whom he thought was a ghost. After a warm talk, Naruto and Jiraiya leave, all while Aoi asks Naruto to come back again, to which Naruto smiles. The story then continues to the Shippuden plotline. From the beginning of the Kazekage rescue arc up to the halfway mark in said arc. The game ends around episode 15 in the anime after Naruto defeated Itachi. It's crazy how these new stories have the potential to be just as good as any of the actual canon arcs. And I gotta say, these PS2 games hold up amazingly. The graphics, you know, for a PS2 game are relatively great. The gameplay, phenomenal. The cutscenes, good. It's all around good game. Alrighty, on to the next one. Naruto Ultimate Ninja 5 This game's plot is separated into 8 acts. There is also an extra act. The game's 8 acts are directly related to the Kaze Kage Rescue Mission and the Tenchi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission. The game starts from the beginning of Shippuden and goes up to the meeting between Naruto with Sakura Sai and Yamato as a team and Sasuke at Orochimaru's hideout. Following the manga, it covers the events up to episode 53 in the anime. The reasoning behind this was because the anime had not finished working on that arc yet. After that, the game's story mode then focuses on side quests. And there's also the aforementioned extra act, but I haven't been able to find anything on that. The game's cutscenes are great, the voice acting is just as good, and the story stays true for the most part, at least. The combat and the fight scenes themselves are great. What more could you ask for? Anyway, on to the PSP. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Heroes 3 The story follows Naruto on his ongoing adventure to save his friend Sasuke, but it starts off with Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi teaming up to rescue Gara from the Akatsuki. This game features a story arc that was designed by CyberConnect2 that is unique to this game, as well as a regular one that follows the Naruto Shippuden storyline. There's also one that explores Sasuke's story. The game's story is voice acted and presented with great still art, as well as character portraits. Again, another game I couldn't find too much information on. Such a bother when great games like this, especially when they're canon for their franchise, just go forgotten. This game is definitely one I'm looking forward to getting my hands on soon. Anyway, on to the last one. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Impact Well, this will be quick. Another piece of forgotten media. This game's storyline covers the Kaze Kage Rescue arc as well as the Five Kage Summit arc. It goes up to the end of Naruto vs. Pain, but the game's final chapter is called Fragment, and it's where you take control of Sasuke in the Akatsuki outfit ordered by Madara to capture Killer B. At least, that's the most I could dig up on it. If you know more about any of these games, please feel free to let me know anything that I have missed. Oh, and because I forgot to mention this, in Naruto Ultimate Ninja Heroes 2, Jiraiya also has his own side of the story where he goes into the castle as well. Jiraiya's team is made up of Lady Sanade and Shisune, 
And whenever Kakashi leaves Naruto in his side of the story, he ends up going to meet up with Jiraiya to make a four-man team. Kakashi then assists Jiraiya in removing the seal that Orochimaru had placed in the basement that requires four people to deactivate. Jiraiya explains that he does know the princess to Shisune, Kakashi, and Sanade. Soon after this talk, Kakashi then leaves to reunite with Naruto. After Jiraiya and his team head deeper into the cave, they find the cauldron containing the vitality of the leaf village. But, to their surprise, Orochimaru was there waiting for them. They then fight, and at first it seems useless. Orochimaru uses the cauldron and the vitality to restore his strength. Then, he uses the cauldron's power to suck the life force out of Jiraiya and the rest. But to Orochimaru's surprise, they find the will to keep fighting, and all together, they attack Orochimaru, with the final blow coming from Jiraiya's Rasengan. The Rasengan pushed Orochimaru back into the cauldron, forcing it to break. But Orochimaru begins to attack again. Jiraiya and Orochimaru fight one last time before Orochimaru makes his escape. The castle then begins to crumble, from Naruto and his team removing all the seals. Jiraiya sees the princess one last time and says his goodbyes, happily knowing that she was saved too. Jiraiya and Lady Sanade then speak back in the Hidden Leaf Village, and make a vow to Sarutobi Sensei that they will protect the Hidden Leaf Village. Whew! Okay. Well, that loosely covers the story in the Ultimate Ninja games. Again, if there's anything I left out or anything that you know about that happened in these stories, please feel free to comment down below and let me know. Anyways, if y'all want to see more videos like this, just let me know. Also, go check out my TikTok at underscore U-G-H-L-Y underscore. I post videos on Naruto and DC as well as some random gaming videos. So if you're interested in any of that, please feel free to go over and check it out. And with all that out the way, I'll see y'all in the next one.